Well, maybe you thought finding slope had no purpose in science. Well, matter of fact, it is very important when we come down to looking at graphs for velocity and acceleration. Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at graphs for velocity and graphs for acceleration. So, as a refresher, a graph for velocity, we're looking at a y-axis that has distance and an x-axis that has time. So that way, if we're looking at it, velocity equals distance, the y-axis, over the x-axis, which is time. And we're also, again, another refresher, a graph for acceleration has velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So that way, acceleration equals change in velocity over change in time, or our time down on the bottom. So what's nice and interesting about this, we're going to be looking at the two graphs. And when we look for a graph of distance over time, when we find the slope or the steepness of the line, we are actually finding the velocity, right? We're finding the change in, say, the y-axis, the change in distance over the change in like the x-axis, which is our distance, which is really distance over time. So we're actually going to be finding slope, or you may have heard of it as the constant of proportionality. That's a new term for me. I always learned it as slope. They are the exact same thing. So if you ever heard the equation mx plus b, m is slope, or kx plus b, k is that constant proportionality. We are finding that for that line for that graph. Okay, so the first graph I'm going to show you is exactly a graph for velocity. Now, don't get scared. I'm going to guide you through the really easy process of finding the slope or the constant proportionality. So let's take a look at our graph. Okay, this happens to be find the velocity for this unicorn. So again, it's distance over time. And I have a bunch of different time increments. So this is the x-axis down here. So A says, hey, what is the velocity for 0 to 2 seconds? You know, 2 to 4 seconds, 4 to 8, 8 to 12, and 12 to 18. So how do we start? First thing, I look at the basically the points on the graph at that time interval. So let's look at 0 to 2 seconds. So I look at the change in, say, the y-axis at 0 seconds. It goes from 0 meters, okay, we're going to assume this is meters, up to wherever the point is at 2 seconds, which is actually... 20 meters. So we go from 0 to 2, 20 meters. So we go 20 meters, right? That's the change. So the rise is 20 meters on the y-axis and our change on the x was from 0 to 2 seconds. So if we look at it, it's 20 distance over time, 2 seconds. So 20 divided by 2 and we get a velocity of 10 meters per second. All right, so there's our lovely answer, right? We have distance in meters, we have time in seconds. The next points we have are two to four seconds. So again, I want to find that change in distance because that's always over our time here in that equation for velocity. So at two seconds, we're actually at the 20 meter mark. Okay, we're not at the zero, we're not gonna restart there. So we're at the 20 meter mark and we're moving to, at four seconds, you see we're at 80 meters. So we go from 20 to 80 meters. That's a change in 60 meters. So that's gonna be our top number, 60 meters divided by that change in time. 2 to 4 seconds is 2 seconds. So 60 meters divided by 2 seconds, and we get an answer of 30 meters per second. All right, so far so good, all right? Now, if you understand kind of what's happening with slope, what's happening, you know, happening with the constant proportionality, or if you just understand a graph for velocity here, distance over time, the next portion, 4 to 8 seconds, there is no change in the distance. You're at 80 meters and you stay there. So what's the speed? Your stop, so it's actually zero. There's no change, you're at 80, you stay at 80, so it's actually the answer is zero meters per second. D and E are interesting in the fact that the slope or the constant is actually declining. It's actually gonna be a negative number, and you see that change, we go from 80, that's at our eight second mark, and we go all the way down to 40 meters. So we actually go, we actually go backwards 40 meters, so it's a negative 40, divided by the change of time, which is four seconds. So negative 40 divided by four, and we end up getting negative 10 meters per second. So that basically means, hey, we're going in reverse. The unicorn's flying, driving, I don't know what it's doing. It's going backwards at negative 10 meters per second. And our last one, very similar. We're at 40 meters and by 18 sec or at 18 seconds, we have made it all the way down to 10 meters. So 40 
minus that 10, so it's negative 30 meters. We go back 30 meters, negative 30 in six seconds. So negative 30 divided by six, negative five meters per second. So hopefully that helped you understand a graph for velocity. Now let's take a look at a graph for acceleration. We're doing the exact same thing. So the same way we found that slope of kind of doing the change in the y-axis over the change in x. Um, some of you, if you're kind of old school like myself, you know that as the rise over the run. Okay. Now instead of doing distance over time, we're going to be looking at, you know it, graph for acceleration, it's going to be a change in velocity over time, which just happens to be that lovely equation for acceleration. So we have four points. Let's start the same exact way. So at zero seconds, we're going to go to um, five seconds. At zero seconds, we're looking at the y-axis. We're at 50 meters and we end up going to zero meters. So we're actually going slower, right? We're slowing down. So we're going to decelerate, which happens to be a change of velocity. So we go from 50 to zero. That's negative 50 over our time period, five seconds. So negative 50 divided by five and we end up getting right? Negative 10 meters per second squared. Keep in mind the units have changed. The same finding slopes, finding that um, constant proportionality, that idea has not changed. It's just the units. So for acceleration, again, the answer is negative 10 meters per second squared. So from five to seven seconds, now we're actually speeding up. So we go from zero meters per second, and now we're going all the way up to 30. So we have 30 meters per second is our change in velocity over that change in time, which is two seconds. So hopefully you do the math, 30 over two, and we end up getting 15 meters per second squared. Okay, similar to finding slope for a horizontal line for velocity. When we're looking at a graph for acceleration here, right, there is no acceleration. We're going at a constant rate from seven seconds to 12 seconds. So we know the answer is zero meters per second squared. And last but not least, we go from 30 meters per second as our velocity all the way up to 90. The change in velocity is 60 meters per second. We divide that by the six seconds it takes us to do that. So 60 divided by six, and we end up with the answer of 10 meters per second squared. So hopefully that's very helpful for you guys when you're actually looking at these two different graphs and maybe you have a mean instructor that tells you, hey, find the slope, find the constant of proportionality, or basically another way of saying that, on a graph for distance of time, you're finding velocity. On a graph of velocity over time, you're finding actually the acceleration. Um, so hopefully that was very helpful to you. Um, go ahead and give it a bunch of other problems a shot. Try some other graphs, see if you're actually getting the right answers. And hopefully using these techniques, you will. Thanks for watching.